Good news for people suffering from extreme thirstiness over Claire and Jamie barely having sex this season. The drought lander is over. To quote the Spice Girls, tonight is the night when two become one, by which I mean everyone's favorite time-traveling couple made love in their tent while poor young Ian slept next door. Who will pay for his therapy bills? Will his ears ever recover? This, and more important moments from Sunday's Outlander, lie below. And her husband's to be is none other than Lord John Gray. But let me rewind for a moment for those of you who are deeply confused by this turn of events. Basically, Aunt Jocasta convinces Brianna that her baby will be seen as a bastard if she doesn't get married by the time it's born, an unfortunate fact that Brianna's understandably keen to avoid. Jocasta goes ahead and throws a dinner party so her niece can meet a fleet of balding middle-aged suitors, all of whom make Roger and his mustard yellow turtleneck look like a catch. Yes, I'm still mad at Roger, and no, I won't be forgiving him anytime soon. But hark! Lord John Gray happens to swing by for dinner, and afterwards Brianna catches him having sex with one of her suitors when she sneaks downstairs for a cookie, side note, relatable. Brianna ends up asking John to marry her as a way of avoiding being proposed to by a total stranger, which, actually, scratch that. Brianna threatens to out John as gay if he doesn't marry her, he gets understandably pissed, she apologizes, and he eventually agrees to the engagement after a brief bonding session. Guess this is a thing now. John Gray doesn't tell Brianna he's raising her brother. Brianna and John are pretty open with each other. He admits his feelings for Jamie, she tells him what happened with Roger and Bonnet, but there's one major secret between them, Brianna has no idea that John is raising Jamie's son. So, yep, looks like Brianna's walking into a marriage where she'll casually be stepmother to her brother. Cool. P.S. John Gray gives Brianna a note from Jamie, but we've yet to find out what it says. Stay tuned. P.P.S. Does Lizzie still have malaria? Guess we'll never know because no one's bothered to ask her. Claire and Jamie find the bones of Roger's friend. These two are barely in the episode, and most of their scenes involve withering looks and passive aggression. But Claire eventually realizes that she's not actually mad at Jamie, she's simply mad at the world, and apologizes for being so icy, especially after he somewhat adorably admits that he's jealous of Frank. Naturally they have a bunch of makeup sex while young, emotionally traumatized Ian is presumably sleeping right next to them, and I am not sure his virgin ears will ever recover. Thank the good lord he has Rolo, who at this point is basically a therapy animal. And speaking of Outlander's resident doggo, he finds the remains of Roger's friend who died in captivity last week. The discovery of his body is a, gross, b, sad, and c makes Claire and Jamie feel hopeful they're on the right trail, but they still have weeks before they make it to the Mohawk village. Murtaugh is arrested and I'm very worried. A lot of this episode is spent on a rather dull saga pertaining to Fergus feeling sad about not having a job. While it's pretty snoozy, there's a sweet moment where Marsley asks Murtaugh to include him so he feels useful. This plan fully backfires because the two pair up to kidnap Stephen Bonnet and get caught in the act. The good news? Fergus manages to get away. The bad news? Murtaugh is recognized as a wanted man and he and Bonnet are hauled into jail. Roger is back with a mohawk. So, guess he didn't go through the stones after all, which wins him at least a few points. Unfortunately, unsurprisingly Roger seems to have been recaptured by the mohawk and he's promptly beaten upon arriving at their village. In fact, the episode ends with him being punched in the face, which honestly seems to be a theme at this point. And with that, we only have two episodes left in the season.